so two recession proof canadian stocks first one is my most favorite canadian stock which is the biggest holding currently in my portfolio as an individual stock which also gave me 73% return in last two years and the second stock is 5.1% dividend yield stock with the potential to give significant capital appreciation in the long run so let's talk about the first company so why it is my most favorite canadian company so first one is consistent revenue growth year over year second is profitable company with good net income third is strong positive cash flow fourth is strong industry position with global reach in around 24 countries fifth is strong management of the company now the company i am talking about is alima tashio kostar now please don't judge me if i mispronounced it as warren buffett says never invest in a business that you don't understand so let's quickly understand the business so atd is a convenience store chain that operates primarily in north america europe and asia selling a wide variety of products including fuel snacks drinks and basic groceries currently their store count is around 14000 across 24 countries around 9 million customers are served in these stores every single day now their business strategy to grow their network of stores is acquisition of small convenience stores and gas station chains along with opening up their new stores you can see how they have acquired so many small chains over the years and they can do this easy shopping with their amazing free cash flow from the business now if we see the conversion of free cash flow from EBITDA in 2022 it was 42% which is actually phenomenal so in 2022 their EBITDA was 5.24 billion dollars and the free cash flow was 2.2 billion around 42% so they have a lot of free cash flow with which they acquired these small chains so right now the growth of the company is primarily because of acquisitions as you can see here that 70% is from acquisitions and 30% is organic from their existing stores but eventually it will pivot to 60% organic and 40% from the acquisition now if we see their geographic revenue streams then 66% of revenue comes from USA in terms of products 72% is from fuel and 26% of revenue is from merchandise and services so one may say that because of the EV adoption they will be negatively impact so the answer is yes but the transition to EV will take several years if not decades however the company is taking steps to address this challenge by pivoting its business strategy to include the provision of EV charging facilities particularly in Europe so as we can see the number of chargers and site increases in Scandinavia company has EV charging facility in North America as well and they have also announced 200 sites across North America for 2024 I don't want to bore you guys so I will give you the link of this presentation in the description if you want to read in depth however I will quickly go through the important numbers so this is the final financial highlight of the company for the last 10 years the most impressive points are that the company has managed to grow its revenue by 11% every year and 19% growth in net income every year now the current price of the stock is 64.66 Canadian dollar which is almost all-time high so wait for some correction to enter now the dividend yield is a about 0.9% which is not very high as company is focusing more on the growth so the forward PE of this stock is 16 and if we compare that to its competitors Metro and Loblo companies then it's fairly priced so in a nutshell great business profitable company 
amazing free cash flow strong management make this company a very attractive investment option now let's talk about the second stock which could be worth considering as a dividend stock with 5.1 percent dividend yield so i personally like the companies that have a strong competitive advantage or mode which creates a high barrier to entry for potential competitors and difficult for the existing competitors so Canada has a few major telecom companies that dominates the whole industry and one of them is TELUS. So TELUS is currently trading at 27.3 Canadian dollars with the dividend yield of 5.1% as mentioned. Dividend payout ratio of TELUS is 170% meaning company is earning $100 and paying out $117 in dividend which is definitely not sustainable in the long run but the question is then how they are able to pay those dividends so that is by taking more debt or by issuing new shares which is also known as share dilution now price to earning ratio is around 24 and price to book value of telus is 2.33 which is in line with the industry average so yes telus has a high debt high dividend payout ratio but they also have a strong network infrastructure to compete with they are also innovators in the telecom field i believe that the key factor in the future growth of this company could be from the telus health and agriculture sectors in short telus will stay around for decades in the canadian telecom industry and would make some good money so as of now good dividend yield and entering at this discounted stock price could be a great investment in the long run so let me know in the comment section what do you think about atd and talus as an investment so thank you very much for watching this video if you like my content please do like share and subscribe the channel this video is just for an educational purposes and please do not consider it as any recommendation